I want to talk about the uh, concept of efficient markets. Now, efficient markets are important because they have implications for investing and how you should go about investing, what investment opportunities you should take, and perhaps any um, opportunities to make excess returns. Now, to start off with the concept of efficient markets, we oftentimes talk about random walks. A random walk is a, is a mathematical term that talks about some series of data being unpredictable. Now, in the case of uh, finance, we're interested in stock price movements. Are they predictable? And a lot of people have done research on this and found that they tend to have, follow a random walk, that it's a random pattern. And unfortunately, stock prices don't move in a predictable pattern so that you can jump in and take advantage of that and make some money. And why is that? Well, the argument is, is, that, is that these random patterns occur because the market's efficient and so when new information comes out, the market adjusts quickly. So let's take a look here. If you look at this chart here, this is a chart that's a random walk. I mean, look at the, the data. It appears to be random. Okay, sure, right here you can say, oh, it's at the bottom. I should have bought here. I should have sold here. But when you were here, did you know it was going to go up? It could have gone down. It could have flattened out. You don't really know. I mean, there don't really seem to be predictable patterns. Um, it goes up. It goes down. It went up again. It went down again. Actually, it does seem to have a little bit of a pattern. It seems to go up to the same high and then down to sort of the same low for a while, but then it breaks out and goes to a higher high and then falls back to about the same low it was before. Then it goes up, but not as high as it was before. It seems to jump all over the place. It's hard to know what sort of pattern we have here. In fact, people have done things where you can flip a coin, and you may try this yourself. Start with a stock price of $50. Flip a coin. If it's heads, have the price of the stock go up 50 cents. If it's tails, have the stock price go down 50 cents. Now, we know that flipping a coin, a fair coin, is random. But you don't expect to flip heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. You may flip three or four heads in a row, and then a couple of tails, and then maybe three or four more heads in a row, and then maybe four or five tails in a row. And so you may get a pattern like this, where it goes down for a while because you flipped a number of tails, and then it starts to go up because you flip several heads in a row, and then you flip a few more tails in a row, and it goes up and down and up and down. And on average, if you flip it enough, you'll probably wind up back around that $50 price you started with. You'll have tossed about half as many heads as tails. But you won't necessarily do them, you know, one after the other um, alternating. Now, this idea of random walks leads us to what we call the efficient markets or efficient markets hypothesis. An efficient market is a market where securities reflect all possible information quickly and accurately. So when information comes out, the market reacts quickly. And in order to have an efficient market, you have to have a lot of investors in there, and they have to be knowledgeable. They have to be analyzing, they have to be trading the stock so that the stock prices adjust. Um, information has to be widely available to all investors. Uh, certain events such as labor strikes or accidents tend to happen randomly. And investors react quickly and accurately to new information. And we really want the markets to be efficient because prices are a way for the economy to determine how to allocate resources, you know, which stocks should be purchased, okay, which industries should attract money so they can grow. Well, they should be the ones with the best return. So in, a, in an efficient market, things will work better for the economy. So it has implications, not just for investing, but for the overall efficiency and growth of the economy. Now, in order to test whether the market is efficient, People have come up with different ways to test it, or different forms of market efficiency. There's the weak form of the efficient market hypothesis, the semi-strong form, and the strong form. Okay? 
And these deal with what types of information cause market prices to change. Okay, Is there a way for you to make a profit using certain information? So let's take a look at each one of these. The idea of the weak form of the efficient market hypothesis is that you can't use past data on stock prices uh, to predict future stock prices. That is, you can't look at a chart like the one we just looked at before and make any money off of this. You can't, you know, if you look at this, it appears that there's a pattern, but only after the fact. If you were here, would you know if it was going up, down, okay, going to stay flat? Don't know, okay? Doesn't seem to be any real discernible pattern here. It goes up, it goes down in, in different patterns, okay? Everything's just random. And if this is the case, then the best strategy may be a buy and hold strategy. Buy your stock, okay, or buy your mutual fund, and just sit on it. Don't do anything, okay? Don't try and guess. We call this market timing, where you try and guess if the market's at the bottom so that you can buy, and if you think the market's at a peak, you sell, and then you buy at the bottom. And if you could do that, you would make a lot of money. But it's very, very difficult to do, okay? It's always easy after the fact to say, I knew the market uh, was going to go up from here. Okay? If you go back to 2009, when the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average hit 6,000, it had been as high as 14,000 um, a couple of years earlier. It's easy to say now that, oh, I knew that was the bottom. But how many people were bailing out? That's why the price was still going down, because a lot of people thought it was going to go down to 5,000 or 4,000 or 3,000. Some people probably thought it was going to zero, so they started bailing out. The semi-strong form of the efficient market hypothesis says that not only do you use past stock price data, you can't make any money using publicly available information. So if you pick up your Wall Street Journal or your New York Times or your USA Today, or if you're watching... Uh, CNBC and they give you some news about some company you can't make any money off of that because the market reacts so quickly in fact this is a nice diagram down here and down here is the days before the announcement sometimes we call it the event in fact academics refer to this type of study as an event study and the event date is day zero and you have days before the event, minus 20, minus 30, 30 days before the event, and then you have days after the event. And this green line is what is the correct price. So before the event, or before the announcement, this is the price. Then all of a sudden the announcement's made, and in an efficient market, the price shoots up to the correct price and then just flattens out given that there's no additional news to change anything. If the market overreacts, it may be the case that the news hits and you have this red dashed line here. It goes up too high and then eventually it comes back down. In fact, it may come down a little too far and then eventually it gets back to where it, the right price. And then there's also this delayed response to good news. That is, the market doesn't react instantaneously. So if you pick up the Wall Street Journal and you see that Apple is introducing a new product, or you see some other company uh, is introducing a new product that's supposed to be terrific, that it doesn't react immediately, it reacts slowly over time. In this case, the market's not efficient. So this slow reaction means, hey, I read the paper, I can jump in here, and maybe I can make some money because um, it's going to continue to go up. Oh, Apple introduced uh, the iPad, and instead of reacting quickly, it reacted slowly. I bought in down here, and I actually made some money. Okay, the final form of the efficient market hypothesis is the strong form. And basically, it says there's no information, public or private, that can allow an investor to earn an abnormally high return. And this is the case that, this is the reason that we have things like insider trading laws. Okay, There seems to be evidence that 
the market is not strong form efficient. If you happen to be um, if you happen to be working for a pharmaceutical company and you happen to know that the FDA is not going to approve your new drug or is going to approve your new drug and the rest of the market doesn't know it, that's a big advantage. If you happen to know, you know what your earnings are before you report them, but the market doesn't know. You know that actually your company did better than the market thinks. Um, you know the price is going to jump when the news hits the uh, hits the um, hits the newspaper, okay, or hits CNBC. This is a case where insider trading rules come into effect. Um, you may remember a number of years ago, Martha Stewart got into some trouble, actually went to jail. She actually went to jail, I believe, for uh, obstruction of justice. But there were questions about insider trading, <clears throat> about whether she um, actually had some information about a company she had invested in not receiving uh, FDA approval for their new uh, cancer drug, I believe. And she sold the stock before the news hit the uh, um, hit the public. So you get a lot of these things happening. If you've seen the movie Wall Street, early in the movie, um, Charlie Sheen gives uh, Michael Douglas some information about insider uh, about uh, this airlines that his father works for that they're going to be cleared that the that um, the accident was not due to um, to the maintenance staff but due to mechanical error or, or something wrong with the uh, plane, it was a manufacturer's defect. So the airline's price would probably shoot up. So that's the reason we have these kinds of laws. Now, people have tested a lot of these forms of the efficient market hypothesis, and they've come up with some market anomalies. And there, there are some, there are calendar effects, for example, if you buy at certain times of the week or certain times of the year, um, is there an opportunity to make some money? There seems to be a January effect. And the January effect is the idea that small, small stocks seem to perform well the first couple of weeks in January. One of the arguments for the January effect is this is a tax loss selling effect. That is, people sell their losing stocks in December in order to take the tax loss on their tax return and then they buy back some of these companies in January which gives them a little bit of a boost and their stock price shoots up. Um, there seems to be a small firm effect that small firms seem to have higher returns than larger firms even after you adjust for risk. Okay? Smaller firms tend to be riskier than large firms but researchers have adjusted for risk and they can't seem to get rid of that. Um, earnings announcements. Uh, stock prices may continue after earnings announcements have been announced. Okay, so they may continue to move up. They may continue to adjust. And that's the case where perhaps you do read the Wall Street Journal and you're able to still buy in and get the and buy the stock and see it go up a little bit more because the market didn't react immediately. They've also found uh, a price earnings effect. That is, um, value stocks, low PE stocks, tend to outperform high price earnings stocks or growth stocks. So they've found some of these effects. They tend to be rather small in nature. But why is the efficient market hypothesis important? Well, if you believe the market is efficient, then there's no reason to pay someone to manage your money you should simply invest in things like low-cost index funds which um, just try and mimic some index like the S&P 500. The costs are lower and since they're not since most funds aren't going to beat the market anyhow you might as well just buy all the stocks in the market and hold them have lower cost and and have a good solid return that way. In fact the S&P 500 tends to be two-thirds of the funds in most years. So while you can certainly find a good fund that beats the market this year, are they going to beat it next year? And that comes at a price. You're going to have to pay that fund manager extra money to do the research in order to try and pick you out good stocks. So 
There are a lot of implications of the efficient market hypothesis. There do seem to be some anomalies, but they're relatively small. And after transactions costs, you may not be able to actually profit from these.